What's up, Poker Beast? Kato here, and today we are playing cards. It's actually tonight, Saturday night. The casino's popping off. Let's just spell. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're doing a max buy-in, $300 at the 1-3 game. If you're new to the channel, I play low stakes poker, and I'm here to encourage you to hit the felt. The first hand we pick up is pocket threes in the low jack. The new player at the table who I know to be active and aggressive has put a straddle on the button. The middle position player limps, I limp as well, the hijack limps, and the button decides to bump it up to $21. It folds around to me, and I'm going to go ahead and make the call. The hijack makes the call as well. We're going three ways to the flop with $91 in the pot. Pocket threes is such a small pocket pair that I probably should have just folded to that bet size, and the dealer puts out deuce jack four. I've probably waited for 45 minutes to get to the table. I think a little bit of eagerness is showing through with this hand. It checks around to the original better. He takes another look at his cards, and he decides on a bet. It looks like he's going to make a big one, but then he cuts it back and chooses a sizing of $30. I don't believe him. He's likely continuation betting with just about anything, and I decide to make the call. This is definitely questionable, even if I think I'm beating him because of the player behind, but the player behind folds. We're going to the turn, which is the four of spades. There's $151 in the pot, and I checked to the original better, and he instantly bets $50, not seeming to put any consideration to the bet. I just don't believe him. I think if he had an overpair, he'd be betting larger. That means that he has to have a jack, and I know this player to be aggressive, and so I just am going to push him all in, put him to the test, and I make it $239. He thinks about it for a little while, but not too long before deciding on a fold. Although it was a risky spot to put $300 in the pot, I think I definitely have the winning hand. Let's move on to the next one. $425 in my stack, and I decide to be patient waiting for next hand. I'm not quite patient enough. I get queen nine of clubs in middle position, and I decide to open the action up to $13. I get one player. The player to my left decides to make the call. I think these suited cards with a decent gap in between are just going to be folds from now on, especially from this position. It's probably right there on the edge, but at my skill level, I'm probably plus EV just folding them away and waiting for redder spots. It folds around, and we're headed to the flop heads up. There's $30 in the pot, and the dealer puts out 710 jack with two clubs. This is a fantastic flop for me. I have a straight draw and a flush draw, and I'm just going to continue betting, building the pot for in case I hit one of my draws. I decide on a sizing of $25. My opponent folds away, and I'm scooping a very small pot. I fold around a handful of more hands. It goes about an orbit, and then I look down at pocket nines in the hijack. There's a straddle on the pot, and it folds around to me, so I decide I'm going to bump it up to $25, bringing the pot to $35 total. With the straddle in the pot and such a marginal pocket pair, I decided it's probably best to raise a little bit more than I typically would in order to potentially get it heads up or just take it down. I do take it down, and so I'm scooping another small pot. This table's pretty tight today with the exception of one or two players. The next hand I look down is six, eight of spades in middle position. I decide to limp in, and it folds around to the big blind who bumps it up to $13. I'm going to go ahead and make the call, and we're headed heads up to the flop with $27 in the pot. The dealer puts out seven, seven king with two spades. I had a flush draw, although it's a marginal one, and so my opponent bets $25, and I decide to make the call. The turn is a jack of clubs. My opponent checks, and I'm going to continue building this pot in case I hit my spade. Also, I'm just trying to steal it now. I bet $50. If my opponent makes the call, I'm putting him on some sort of king with marginal kicker, maybe a better flush draw than me, and so I want to tread very cautiously. He does end up making the call, and we're headed to the river with $177 in the pot. The river is the ace of diamonds. This is definitely a card I could bluff on, but with $177 in the pot, I would probably have to make a substantial bet, and with absolutely nothing, I would prefer to just give this one up. I check, and he shows king-queen offsuit. I don't think he probably would have folded unless it was like a pot-sized bet on the river, so I'm glad I slowed down. My stack's down to $364. I fold around another orbit until I get into the low jack and pick up jack tinted diamonds. It folds around to me, and so I decide to open the action up for $25 on the straddled pot. The button plays out a turn and makes the call, and then the small blind and big blind come along as well. There's $100 in the pot. We're headed to the flop four ways. The flop comes out four queen five with one diamond. I basically completely miss, although I do have some backdoor possibilities depending on what the turn brings. It checks around. We're headed to the turn, which is the eight of hearts. I did pick up a get shot straight draw, but not enough to continue when the big blind leads out for $60. Jack 10 suited is a gorgeous hand, but on this board, I have no other choice but to fold. My stack's at 339 when I look down at 9-7 of diamonds in middle position. It's a straddle pot and I decided to limp in. Then the button makes it $40. The small blind and the middle position player calls. And for $34 more into a pot of 141, I decide the price is good enough for me to call. I make the call. We're going to the flop four ways with $175 in the pot. And the dealer puts out 649, no diamonds. I do have top pair, but my kicker is very marginal, and when it checks the middle position player, he rips it all in for $192, bringing the pot to 367 
I just can't make this call, especially knowing that the original large preflop raiser is behind me, and so I make the fold. The next hand I get is ace-10 offsuit in the small blind. I have $305 in my stack, and I'm getting kind of frustrated that nothing's really going my way. I haven't picked up a winning hand in a while. And when the middle position player makes the call, I decide to bump it up to $15. The middle position player makes the call. This is a smart thinking player that's been in multiple previous vlogs, and he kind of has my number. He knows that sometimes I like to push people around. The flop comes out, Jack, King, Nine. I have a gut shot straight draw. My opponent did limp call me, so I'm gonna go ahead and bet these two face cards, $20. My opponent takes a little bit of time, but he ends up deciding on a call. I'm not sure if he was thinking to raise me, thinking because he was calculating some sort of odds. Regardless, we're going to the turn, which is the King of Hearts. It pairs the top card on the board. I'm just gonna continue betting. I'm gonna bet small to make it seem like I'm trying to entice him to make the call. So I go with $35. I think if my opponent had a king here without having a full house, he would probably bump it up because it is such a wet board. I am blocking straights with my 10 of hearts and I'm blocking the nut flush diamond draw with my ace. My opponent thinks about it for quite a while and decides to make the call. We're headed to the river, heads up with $143 in the pot and I'm not ready to give up. And the dealer puts out the six of hearts. I don't get anywhere with this hand. I just have ace high, but I just can't stop and give this pot up. This player, probably has a king or he's probably willing to call me down even with a jack just because he has played with me quite a bit. I don't care. I size up $90 and I put it in the pot. $233 in the pot and he instantly calls me and I tell him he's good. I just muck my hand. I'm guessing he probably had a king, but I wouldn't be surprised if he also only had a jack. What a waste of a good portion of my chip stack. This video took about five and a half hours to edit. It only takes one second to drop a like and it really helps my channel get promoted to viewers who haven't seen my content yet. I'm very grateful for this community and all of your support. The next thing I look down at is Queen 10 offsuit. I'm in the cutoff with $146 in my stack. The under the gun player and the middle position player limp and I decide to bump it up to $16. Once again, I should just be throwing this hand away. It's such a marginal hand. I'm not gonna be making money off of it in the long run. The under the gun player and the middle position player both call. We're headed to the flop three ways with $52 in the pot and the dealer puts out the ace two five. I completely miss, and when the under the gun player leads out for 15, and the middle position player min raises, I just muck. I top up to $300 just in time to look down at pocket jacks. The middle position player limps, I bump it up to 20, the button calls, and the middle position player calls. We're headed three ways to the flop with $64 in the pot. The dealer puts out the 734, two clubs, and the middle position player donk bets out for $30. It kind of caught me by surprise. I've never played with this player before. I just decided to make the call and the button makes the calls. Well, we're headed to the turn three ways with $154 in the pot. And I'm slightly concerned because this is such a connected board. When the turn's the nine of spades, I'm slightly relieved. It doesn't make any straights or flushes. And when it checks to me, I bet $60. The button folds away and the middle position player makes the call. We're headed heads up to the river with $274 in the pot. And the dealer puts out the six of hearts. The middle position player decides to donk bet into me again, a very small bet of $60, and then he does something funny with his cards where he, he acts like he's going to muck them. And he's, I, I've never seen this before, I don't even know what it means. It kind of told me that he had something strong like, oh, if you call me, then I'm just going to muck because you have a good hand. And so I think about it for a little while. I can't fold away for $60, of course. So I make the call, and he ends up showing queen four of diamonds. Super weird. The fact that he plays those types of hands not to mention that he calls $20 pre-flop with him is very telling, and I'm going to remember that info. I'm stacking, finally, a decent pot, and I have $509 in my stack now. It folds around quite a few more hands, and then I finally look down at a beauty, probably the most beautiful hand I've seen all night, ace-queen of clubs. I'm in the hijack, both the middle position player and the low jack limp. I'm going to bump it up here, and I decide on a bet of $16. I probably should have made it at least $18 or $20. The button comes along, the big blind decides to call, and the low jack calls as well. We're headed four ways to the flop with $68 in the pot, and the dealer puts out 8-4 deuce, no clubs, no good for me. When the button bets $42 and then the low jack calls, I have no other choice but to just fold. It's disappointing since it's such a beautiful hand, but if the flop's not there, I don't care. The next hand I pick up is 8-7 of spades. I'm in middle position, the under the gun player limps, and I decide I'm gonna bump it up to $15. The hijack and the under the gun player both call. We're headed to a flop three ways with $52 in the pot, and the dealer puts out ace, seven, four. Today just doesn't seem to be my day. When it's checked to me, I'm gonna continuation bet $25. The hijack comes along, and then the player in the under the gun seat folds. We have $102 in the pot going to the turn, which is the jack of spades. I'm just gonna continue my story, betting about half pot, $50. 
If he doesn't have an ace, he'll probably fold away to this pressure. If he has an ace, probably regardless of the kicker, he's going to be making the call. And if he has two pair better, he probably would be raising me. He settles on just a call, which is kind of disappointing to see because it probably means it's going to be hard to push him off on the river. The river comes out, the queen of spades. Doesn't really change much, but I just am unwilling to give this hand up. And so I decided to make a move. $186. It's about a pot size bet, and I'm really challenging this kicker. He could definitely think that maybe I had ace queen and I hit my two pair or maybe ace jack. Regardless, if he has anything below a 10, I expect him to make a fold. He did call my preflop bet. He didn't re-raise me, although at these stakes, a three bet preflop is just not to be expected even with a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace 10 suited. But regardless, with $388 in the pot, I am just praying that he makes the fold, praying that he can find a fold with an ace. This is a tight player. And so I think that he would be willing to lay down even like ace 10. He thinks about it, and he finally, after really getting my nerves up, decides on the fold. I'm not really playing well this session, and I'm not really getting any cards. And after that stressful hand where I put a bunch of money in the pot with nothing, I decide I'm going to cash out my chips for cold hard cash and come back and fight another day. I can't complain about a small profit. I'm in for 450 out for 510 with a profit of $60.